Okay, so we're going to get started. Um, please make sure that you fill out the attendance form. If you just joined, um, the QR code is on the screen. And if you're watching the recording, please make sure to fill it out as well. So uh, thank you for coming. Um, this is our agenda for today. Um, so we're going to start with um, an issue for the week. So as you guys might have know, as you guys know, um, over the past month, we had an election. So Amnesty International has issued a set of 80 policy recommendations for the new Biden administration to adopt uh, in order to uh, uphold U.S. Uh, human rights policy in the United States and around the world. So these um, these reforms do not require new authorization or new legislation, and they're very important in kind of helping uh, in helping uphold human rights both in the United States and around the world, as I said before. So every week we're going to uh, learn about a new policy recommendation issued by Amnesty International so that we can learn more about these issues that uh, we need to advocate for. Um, so our first one is arms sales. So. Um, so the United States of America is the world's largest exporter of arms and inappropriate use of the weapons can and does cause serious side effects and risks. In Yemen, the world has witnessed the Saudi Arabia Air Force strike a school bus with 51 civilians, 49 of them being children, with an U.S.-made MK-82 precision-guided munition. We've seen a funeral hall bombed, leaving 150 dead and 600 injured. A strike in the capital, Sana'a, killed 16 civilians. 22 million Yemenis must rely on the humanitarian assistance to survive, and half, the, half that number are at risk of famine. 400,000 children are at risk of starving to death. According to the World Health Organization, Yemen is struggling to contain the worst cholera, I'm sorry, outbreak in the world. A blockade of Yemen's ports of entry by the Saudi UAE-led coalition has restricted aid from entering the country, triggering a, triggering a famine which threatens the lives of 12 million people. Israel has used U.S.-made arms to commit grave abuses of humanitarian and international law. Cameroon has used U.S.-made arms to commit torture, extrajudicial executions, arbitrary detonation, all committed with near-blank impunity. Nigeria's police military have committed systematic and yeah, systematic and systematic human rights violations with impunity and dating back to before the start of the Fourth Republic in 1999. Abuses including extrajudicial executions, torture, disappearances, the bombing of camps of refugees and internationally displaced persons, the use of child soldiers, detentions of children, rape and sexual assault, and wholesale destruction of property and livelihoods. So um, because of all this, uh, Amnesty International is calling upon the new Biden administration to end U.S. arms sales to countries that have committed egregious human rights violations, such as Saudi Arabia, the United Arab Emirates, Egypt, Israel, Cameroon, Ethiopia, Nigeria, Mali, and the Philippines. So um, over the course of the next year, we're going to do things like advocate for these issues and a number of other issues that Amnesty International has put forward and also learn about them so we can be more educated about our country's role in the human rights agenda of the world at large. So um, that's the issue for the week. So as we talked about last meeting, um, a big focus of this year is going to be lobbying and we're gonna um, focus on lobbying the Break the Cycle of Violence Act and we're hoping to do it sometime before winter break. So um, because this is what we're gonna work on for the next few meetings, we do need everyone to take part in it. Um, so we need everyone to sign up. Most of you guys have not signed up yet. Um, I think it's cause like last meeting, we put a lot of forms for you guys to fill out. So please make sure you fill that out. It just helps us put you guys into groups easy, easier. Um, so we kind of just wanted to uh, kind of correct some uh, clarify some questions you guys might have had. First of all, this is going to be a virtual lobbying uh, opportunity. So we're obviously we're not going to go meet with a representative in person or uh, do anything. We know that everyone's busy. Also, this is going to be something that we're working on during club meetings. And of course, if you can't attend for any reason, that's okay. Not everyone in the group will be speaking on the day of the lobbying. So 
as long as you contribute and help with the research, um, that's perfect. So the act that we're going to lobby for is specifically the Break the Cycle of Violence Act. And so obviously you guys probably don't know very much about it. So we're gonna go over what that is today. So the problem is that gun violence in the US is a human rights crisis. The sheer volume of people getting killed or injured each year by gun violence is staggering. Killing an average of 109 people every single day, gun violence is the second leading cause of death among children, and disproportionately affect and disproportionately affects communities of color nationwide. In 2019, nearly 40,000 people died as a result of gun violence, including in over 400 mass shootings. The solution: authorize 150 million dollars annually for at least 10 years to commute to community gun violence prevention and intervention programs that have been proven effective in decreasing gun violence in communities where there are persistently high levels of firearm violence. Programs include hospital-based violence intervention programs, evidence-based street outreach programs, and group violence intervention strategies. Okay, so we kind of wanted to show you what a lobby day might look like so you can get a feel of um, what you would be doing on the day. So this, so we did lobby for the same uh, bill last June. So we're just gonna go over, we're just gonna walk through it and you guys can follow along if you want to, so. Okay. We can start. You think you wanna start? I'm sorry. Okay. Um, hi, Mrs. Rogers. Thank you so much for taking the time to sit down with us today. We really appreciate you caring enough to speak with us. And thank you for introducing the Gun Violence Prevention through Financial Intelligence Act last year. We really admire your initiative in proposing pre preventative measures to combat gun violence. Okay, so today we are uh, uh, we are here on behalf of Amnesty International USA to speak to you about the Break the Cycle of Violence Act, HR 4836. We are asking for your support in assisting Congress to authorize $150 million annually for a minimum of 10 years to community gun violence prevention and intervention programs, especially those of which that have a lack of funding and where gun violence is the most prevalent. We are asking to support the Break of Break the Cycle of Violence Act, H.R. 4836. This bill will grant $90 million annually for at least 10 years to communities that suffer from 20 or more homicides per year or have a homicide rate at least twice the national average. Though the bill calls for $90 million, we, are, we at Amnesty International are hoping that you will commit $150 million annually to have a larger impact. Specifically, the money will go to community-led gun violence prevention programs. Such programs include group intervention initiatives hospital-based intervention initiatives, and more. Such funding will allow communities to prevent gun violences before it happens, making everyone safer and decreasing the need for drastic police action. Furthermore, by preventing incidents of gun violence, we will also decre decrease the rate of incarceration among communities of color, allowing these neighborhoods to thrive. In one week alone, my school was faced with three separate school shooting threats. I was scared out of my mind, to say the least. I felt like with every second I was in the building, I was risking my life. When I was in my classes, I constantly looked at the door and came up with an exit strategy in case there was an active shooter in the building. And when I passed by my friends and teachers in the hallways, I remember wanting to cry to possibly talk with them for the last time or to say thank you and goodbye. Because what if, and when I got home each day, I went straight to my parents to see their faces. My little sister, who's 10 years old, hugged me every morning before I went to school and every night. Davis, you're not done. Oh, sorry, my bad. <laughs> before she went to bed, I believe that my little sister's biggest fear should be monsters and ghosts and not losing me or her own life. Living with the constant fear that it might be the last time I see my family or friends is a feeling I simply couldn't wish on anyone. I can't learn without potentially risking my life. I can't go to the movies without texting my mom a dozen times. And I can't walk outside without saying goodbye to my family. Gun violence needs to stop and it needs to stop now. Children deserve a happy childhood and we need a safe learning environment. 
We are requesting Representative Wexton support of Break the Cycle Violence Act, as well as her support for increasing the act's funding from $90 million annually for at least 10 years to $150 million annually. We also request her to emphasize and advocate for the eight priorities in the House. So here we would open up to questions. Obviously, the representative would have questions for us, um, and we would answer any that we know. Over the time when we're researching and coming up with the script, we will obviously learn a lot more about the bill, so you guys should be prepared to answer questions, but um, we won't be able to answer everything. So uh, if we don't know the answer, um, we have people that we work with, policymakers at Amnesty International, and we just forward the questions to them. So. Um, and then we would repeat the ask. So to conclude, I would like to request once more Representative Wexton's support on the Break the Cycle of Violence Act, H.R. 4836, and to request that the representative push for the bill's funding to be increased from $90 million annually for at least 10 years to $150 million annually. Again, we want to thank you so much for sitting down with us today. We really appreciate your time and attention. So as you guys see, it's not um, something that's very difficult. It's not hard. So, uh, and it's pretty short. So that's what we'll be working on over the next um, few meetings. So if you have any questions about that, please let us know now so we can answer them and make sure that you're signed up. So are there any questions about the lobbying process? Um, I just had a question. It was not, it's not really about the lobbying process, but um, when we pick a bill to lobby or a, um, something to lobby, do we pick it or does Amnesty give it to us? So, I mean, we can do both. Um, Amnesty International has been really pushing for the Break the Cycle of Violence Act recently. So that's what we're focusing on at first, but we're obviously trying to have multiple lobbying opportunities throughout the year. And we want to open it up to you guys as well, what you guys are passionate about, uh, what you guys want to lobby for. So, and we can lobby like any level of government, it doesn't just have to be Representative Wexton. It can be our uh, state delegates or state senators, um, our um, Virginia senators. So we have a lot of kind of, um, opportunities there. But at first, we're going to do the Break the Cycle of Violence Act, especially because Amnesty has a lot of resources about it. And it's something that they want to um, promote and get passed. But after we finish this, yeah, we should be able to pick other bills that we want to do. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Are there any questions? I'll take that as a no. Okay, so thank you guys so much for coming. Um, please make sure that you're signed up for the lobbying. Um, it's just gonna be random, Lorenzo. <laughs> but if you have any preferences, uh, you can write it in the comments uh, on the form. So um, thank you so much for coming. If you have any questions, please let us know. You can send a remind message and we hope to see you next meeting where we'll start work.